In this video, I'll be showing you how you can generate a website from your Recollector collection. I'm going to start here with the finished product. I'm showing you um, a website that was generated uh, using my map collection. Um, and I generated this from Recollector, and I transferred the generated files up to a web server. And we're now looking at that website on the web server. The main page of a website generated with Recollector is a table with one row per record and with information from up to three of the fields in your collection. I chose to include a uh, map maker title and a uh, thumbnail image for, um, from the image field in my collection as what is shown in the table. But you can choose really whatever you want. Um, I also, um, you'll notice here that uh, the fields are sorted by the first field, so um, we see alphabetic listing of map maker, which makes it easy to find um, any particular map. Any one of these maps has links on all of the fields, including the images, to a page for the particular item. So let me jump to a particular page. This looks a lot like an item details page from within Recollector. And that's really the idea, is to take what's in the item details and to show it to you in the form of a web page. So you have a thumbnail image, which if you click on it, brings up a, a full-size image of the uh, item. We have, in this case, I have hyperlinks to another web page, um, which is actually a zoomable version of this particular map. I have hyperlinks to um, reference information. Um, again, these, these mirror the same kinds of functionality that you see on the item details page. And finally, you have hyperlinks that are jump to links, links that will take you from one record to a uh, similar record. OK, so how did this all get generated? Well, to see that, we'll switch back to Recollector itself. Now, I'm running here on a PC. But what I'll be showing you would be just the same if you were running on the Macintosh version of Recollector. From the File menu, to get started, you choose Generate Website with Wizard. And this brings you to a four-step wizard that will let you make the choices you need to make to configure the website the way you want it. The first step asks you, where do I put all the files that I generate? And um, you choose a parent directory, and you can browse to a particular folder. I'm happy to use this uh, temp web folder that came up as the default, because that was the one I most recently used when I was using this wizard. For the folder name, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Greenland, because I'm going to make uh, a website just from my Greenland maps. The type of generated file, normally the wizard generates HTML uh, files. But if you are merging this website into an existing website that uses PHP, you can ask that PHP files be generated instead. And then finally on this page, you're asked what to include in the website, either the entire collection, all the records, or just the records from a particular subset. And I actually want to just do the Greenland maps. So I've chosen my subset. Let's move to the next page of the wizard. Now I have to choose which field should appear on those item details, individual record pages of the website. And there's several different ways to, to make these choices. Um, perhaps the easiest way is to use a field profile. Um, if you don't know what a field profile is, there's another video in this set that describes field profiles, how you create them, and how you use them. And I have in this collection a number of field profiles that I had made, one including uh, one for websites that has just the set of fields I want to include when I'm generating a website. So I've made that choice. I can now also choose the size of the thumbnail images that appear on those pages. The next step of the wizard asks me about the sort order. Now, the sort order is the order in which the records are linked together, so that when you use the next and previous links in the, uh, on, at the top and bottom of each of those web pages, it'll take you to the next one in whatever you choose to, be, choose to use as the sort order. And I'm 
going to choose um, not the current sort order, which is sorting by ID number, but rather I'm going to sort by map maker. And ascending order is fine. And we'll go to the next. And here is where we get to configure what's on that main page, the index page of the website. And as I mentioned, you can have up to three different fields from which you draw data. And to reproduce what I had done before, I had map makers my first field, I had title as my second, and I had my image link field, which is where my images are in my collection, as the third field. I'm also asked what size should I make the uh, maximum size of those thumbnail images on the index page. That usually wants to be a smaller number than the thumbnail size for the individual item pages because you don't want the rows in the table to get too tall, or otherwise you won't see very much on each on a screen full of, of that uh, index page's view. So 100 pixels is a pretty good uh, choice. I'll leave it at that. And finally, there's a choice here as to whether to split the index into multiple pages. If you have a very large collection, let's say you have a few thousand records, an index page that has a table with a thousand rows can take a long time to load. And um, particularly if you have thumbnail images as one of the three bits of information on each row. So sometimes you will instead want to split the index into pages that have some maximum number and that have at the top and the bottom of the page, links, uh, just as you see on a Google search. So you can go to the next set of results, the next set of results, or the previous set of results. In this case, for my Greenland maps, I don't have that many maps. So I'm going to turn that off and put everything into a single index page. I'm now finished making my choices, and I'm ready to generate the website. But before I do the full website, I would like to do a test run. Test run lets me look at a sample page to see whether the choices I made about layout and fields and the like um, look right to me. So let's uh, turn on the test run and click Generate Website. And up comes one page, the first page in um, what would be the set of pages that's generated. And I can take a look at this and see what it looks like. That looks pretty good to me. You see the layout. Some of these links are not uh, will not yet be live in this uh, version, but um, this hover over link for more information is live, and you can see that. Uh, you can see that. And you can see the link to a zoomable image. So this looks pretty good. So I'm going to uh, close that down and um, say I'm really ready to do a full run. But actually, before I do that, I'm going to go back one more time to the wizard and go to the to the end. And I'm going to click Finish. And it's telling me it's going to be putting files in a folder that's already there. And that's fine. OK, the thing I wanted to show you is this business about saving the choices I've made. Um, Making the set of choices took a little bit of time and a little bit of thinking. And particularly if I plan to regenerate my website periodically as I add new material to my collection and want to update my website, I really don't want to have to be going through the wizard and remembering what are exactly were all the choices I made. So what I can do is I can create a template. And let's call it Website Template. And now, after I'm finished using this wizard, the next time I come in, you'll see I will be able to use the template to uh, make a shortcut through all those choices and go right to the generate website uh, point in the, uh, in the process. So now I'm ready to go, and I'm going to click Generate Website, and it's done. really didn't take long at all. Um, if we take a look here, I'm going to bring up um, a file explorer. Here are the files that got generated in the C Temp Web Greenland folder. You see individual pages for each of the items. There is the index.html page, that's the main page of the website. There's some ancillary pages that are used 
for some of the fancy functionality uh, of the website. And these you don't have to worry about, but they all should get copied up to the server. And there's two folders, one that holds the full-size images and one that holds the thumbnail images. Now, to create a website or to use this website up on the web, you need to move this full set of files, all the files and folders that we see here in this Greenland folder, they all have to get moved up to a web server. So if you already have a web server, you can make a, a new folder on your web server and put everything there. Or if you don't, and this is the first time you've created a website, go go on the web and, and, and take a look to see who provides free web hosting out there. There's lots of places that do it for free or at very low cost. And you can quickly create a website for yourself. And then you simply move up all these files to the website and you're in business. So we'll go back to uh, the website. I want to show you one additional feature that you can, you can do here. Um, and that has to do with tailoring what appears um, at the top and the bottom of the page. There's a header and a footer which you can customize. Right now, there's nothing in either the header or the footer. There's a title, but there's no, if you go to an individual page, there's really nothing above these links. And at the bottom, there's nothing below the links. There's no header or footer. You can make there be a header or footer by editing one or two of the files that uh, were generated as part of the website. So let's go back um, to that page that we were on here. And I'll show you what's involved there. There's a header.js and a footer.js. I'm going to edit the um, header.js file. I'm going to open it up. And there's some explanation here about what, how you do this. But basically, you add these document.write lines um, into this file that will cause um, uh, information to be put into the header or footer of each page. And let me take the example that's given here and use that. I will replace what we see here with this example, but I don't want John Doe's gem collection. I will say uh, the map record collection. And I will uh, save that file. And now I need to move this saved version of the file up to the website. Now, because I began by showing you the finished product, as I said, the I had already trans I had already done this process and transferred these files up to the website. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this one changed file as well. I'm going to transfer that to the website. I use an FTP program for doing this, but you know, whatever way you have of moving your data from your local computer to your website will work fine. I will go back to my collection here, and I'm going to have to sort of um, clear my browsing data so my web pages, my web browser refreshes from the changed the changes that I just made. We will then be able to refresh the page, and we will see what that looks like. There it is. So now we have a header. And I could also add a footer as well at the bottom if I wanted it. And every page will have this header on it now. So that's one form of customization that you can do. Now, the last thing I want to show is pretend it's a month later, and I have some additional information in my collection, new records that I've added. I want to regenerate my website. Well, when I go to Generate Website with Wizard, on this very first introductory page, you'll notice there's now some additional choices. I'm being asked, do I want to use an existing template rather than filling out all the steps of the wizard? And if I do, I say, use template. And it takes me right to the end. 
it's now to the point where I'm ready to generate the website. And all the choices I made before, the fact that I wanted to use the Greenland subset, the set of fields I wanted, the size of thumbnails, all of that, um, that's remembered from what was saved in the template. And so my website will have exactly the same kind of formatting characteristics it had the first time I generated it. Okay, so that shows you how you generate a website using the Recollector wizard.